So we're going to take a look at a couple of techniques for making spouts. Um, spouts can go on teapots or pitchers or sculptural pieces, um, really a broad variety of forms. But um, making a spout that not only looks good and functions well um, requires some thought. So first of all, I'm going to show you a broomstick technique for a spout. I'm going to use a little bit of clay. And I'm going to first form the basic shape of the spout that I would like to make. Please note, spouts are best functional when they are tapered. When they're tapered, um, it means that there is more water pressure or fluid pressure um, at the base than there is at the front. And so that will make certain that there is enough weight to actually push the fluid out of the vessel instead of just having it dribble off the edge. And so um, I'm going to make a more traditional teapot spout. Um, I'm going to roll a tapered coil and it will get bigger because I'm going to displace the clay from the inside. I like to sort of address the outside before I move forward with the broomstick technique. Then I'm going to use a wooden stick. This is a boxwood tool. Um, you could use a wooden dowel or a pencil works really well too. And so I'm going to enter through the broad side and I'm going to take my time. I'm just kind of rotating and estimating about where the point is because I don't want it to come out the side. I want it to come out the end. Okay, and there we are, it's coming out the end. And so I'm going to keep pushing the tool. And now I'm going to actually sculpt on the stick before I go any further. If the point came out not quite at the center, I can push the clay around to make it much more like the center. And then I can push a bit further and re-sculpt. And that's a pretty good start. So now I'm going to pull the tool back and I'm going to flip it around. You could use a, a paintbrush handle for this part if you don't have a tool like this, or if it's large enough, you can actually start to use your finger. So I'm going to, I'm only pressing the tool in a little ways um, and then I'm just going to widen the base and then I can put the tool in further and I can now what I'm doing is I have the tool inside and I'm pressing against my fingers so it really is a modified pinch technique because this tool is pretty small and this clay opening is pretty small too, so getting my finger in there, I might distort it too much. So now I have a pretty good starting. Um, now I want to go in through this side. I want to center up that opening. And again, I'm pinching down here, really just pressing the clay against the, the tool that's inside functioning as a support. So now, now I should be able to get my finger inside. If you can't, you can continue to use your tool. Um, I add just a little bit of moisture so that my finger can slip and I'm just rotating and pressing you can see that it's pretty consistent. And so now I can really think about the shape that I want the spout to be, uh, including the curve if you want a curve, because now I can pinch that shape. And I'd want it to have kind of a, a more round base. I 
I have a little bit of a crack forming. That's okay. I know to handle that with my serrated rib and my flat rib. So I have a good opening that would attach to the body of my vessel. And now I need to return to the um, spout opening. And I'm really just kind of pushing the clay around the, the tool. So I have a pretty good starting for a spout. For a spout to properly pour, you don't want the edge to be flat like this um, or round like this. Instead, you want the bottom edge of the spout. So if the spout is going to be attached to the teapot like this, um, you want the bottom edge of the spout to actually be kind of sharp so it cuts the water. The other thing that you need to think about is your spout placement, which really gets into teapot anatomy, um, which sounds like a silly thing, but it is definitely a thing. Uh, the tip of your spout, like where the fluid actually comes out, has to be higher than the um, highest point of your vessel that will contain fluid. So if you have a teapot body, um, I can use this cup as an example. If you have a teapot body, a spout like this would not work because if I fill this with fluid up to here, you can see the fluid will tip out. So the spout is going to have to tip upward. So at the very least, it will be marginally higher than the highest point that you can add fluid into. So to do that, what I have to do is I have to trim this spout. And I want to make sure that I have it at the curve that I want it to be at so that I'm not trimming unnecessarily. Always damp and clean your tools first. And cut less than you think you need to because you can always cut more, but adding the clay back on is kind of a pain in the butt. It's not impossible, but you can do it. So I'm going to refine this cut edge just a little bit. So it doesn't have all these sharp, freshly cut areas, so I don't have to do it later. And then when I put it, I can see, depending on where I put it on the vessel, it would work marginally well. Um, but I would actually like it to tip up further, so I'm going to cut again. Damp my tool and cut again. And then when I put it, Yes, that is a significantly better spout, okay? And so then when I'm going to attach it, what I would do is trace the connection point onto the cup body. Then I can either cut one large hole or many smaller holes to serve as a strainer. Um, but after your spout has dried a bit to the leather hard state, um, or even just a little bit beyond into the hard leather hard state, what you'll need to do is actually address this edge. And um, I like to do it with either an X-Acto knife or a stainless knife, but, um, and this, this clay is not dry enough to do this, but basically I'm going to be shearing the inner dimension of the spout so that when the water or fluid pours out of it, it will cut and break instead of dribbling down the edge of the spout. So that is just a very, very simple broomstick spout. Uh, you can, of course, add interesting embellishments just by pressing um, textures as long as you're supporting it on the inside. Uh, you can press any kind of tool that you would like to make repeated patterns um, and add some visual interest to your spout. And because you're doing it on the outside, um, it's pretty easy to push it back out and make the shape that you want. Okay, remember to make sure that it's at leather hard state 
and the piece that you're attaching it to is also leather hard state so that your states match before you attach them together. Match before attach. Another simple approach to making a spout is to use instead of a coil or the broomstick technique, but to use a slab. So I like to take a little ball of clay and make it kind of into like a lemon shape. I'm just sort of pinching out the outer edges and then throw it nice and hard down onto an, a non-stick surface. So this is just an unfinished piece of wood here and I will throw the other side down. Um, and then I'm just basically going to pinch to make a slab that is a lemon shape. The other thing you could do is you could roll it out if you have a brayer or a rolling pin. I'm not applying a lot of pressure with that tool though. And so now I have this basic shape and what I can do is make the bottom portion of the spout right here. Um, just like in the last spout of the O, because this is where the fluid will pour out, this will need to be addressed in the leather hard state so that the fluid can cut when it pours out. And so then I can put this at whatever height I would like it to be. And if you want it to be an open spout, so if it's on this vessel form, I would trace it, um, I would trace the outer edge, and then I would actually cut a hole here so that when this attaches on, um, there's an opening down here and it will have a more fluid pour, okay? Um, if you want it to be closed, you could take another slab and you can create a sort of uh, top or cover for it. So to do this, I'm putting the clay where I want it to be and then I'll flip it over and then using my needle tool I can trace where those pieces attach, take it off and cut. And any of these approaches can be um, embellished upon to add interesting textures um, or even more sculptural elements. So then I can take this and I could attach it to the top. This actually is a really nice teapot spout. Of course, I would score and slip those together. And then I would have to think about how this attaches to the body because this would need to be trimmed. Yes, it's extra work, but it just looks like a more unexpected and interesting solution to the teapot spout or vessel spout. So you could puff this out or you could drop it downward, um, whatever kind of aesthetic you would like. And of course this definitely, it's way too thick here and so it needs to be cut significantly down. <laughs> and this is really gummy. I would do this when the clay is like hard leather hard. So don't do that when it's plastic or you're gonna have a lot more cleanup work to do later. Uh, and then I can place it wherever I want it to be and have an interesting spout. So that's just another two versions of spouts. We have the broomstick, we have the open spout, the closed spout, both made of slabs. Then the last thing you could do is you could actually take your pinched form and you could pinch a spout um, very, very simply. But please remember, if you're doing something like this, once again, this sort of an edge on a spout does not work. It's not functional. So you'll actually need to go in and refine where the fluid will pour out of and you will need to address the edge so that the fluid can cut. 
instead of dribble so that it becomes a very fine, sharp, pointed edge. And that looks awful, but um, again, my clay is really plastic. So those are a couple of techniques for making spouts.